This morning in Successful Living, we are helping you figure out what to do now that tax season, yes, it is over. Gregory Picaro, the president of Atrando Picaro and Associates, joins us today with his insight. Good morning. Good morning, Will. Good, good to see you. Okay, so how many uh, tax ex extensions were filed in, uh, in 2022? There were 19 million extensions filed according to the IRS, about 11% of all returns filed. So it wasn't that bad. It's pretty common that it'll happen like that every year. Okay. So that wasn't such a big deal. I mean, when you hear that number, you think, oh, man, that, that's well, a lot. Well, there's 170 million return, personal returns filed. So right. this is just 1040s, not any of the business returns, too. So there was more. But on the 1040 side, 19 million, they and, said. And not to rat you out, but you admitted you are also one of them. So it's I okay. I am proud to say I am one of them. <laughs> yes, I am. Okay, so for those of, who have filed, what do, what do people do now? Well, now's a good time to look at your tax return and see if it worked out the way you had hoped. Sometimes people are unpleasantly surprised. Right. And sometimes they're pleasant. Pleasantly surprised him. Sometimes a refund can be too big. You had way too much money withheld, you're getting too much money back. Sometimes you way, owe way more than you thought you were going to owe, and that's never a good thing, right? right? So it's important that people look at that and take action by evaluating if their withholding is adequate to cover their income, which could be affected by having two income families or more than one W 2 from multiple jobs. Sometimes the numbers get out of line, and you need to look at your W 4 and make adjustments, which sometimes isn't that easy. Right. So is there a way? so that people can be prepared for next year so that maybe they don't have to file that extension? Or is it kind of like on a year-by-year on a -year basis, depending what, on when you get your paperwork? What we in. see typically is the returns that are extended are relying on information they just don't have. They might own several businesses, the business returns aren't ready, and some people procrastinate. I'm kind of in the middle of that. I have business <laughs> interests and I tend to procrastinate. I'm glad you're admitting this on television <laughs> so everybody doesn't feel so bad. The truth hurts. <laughs> If it's okay for you, it's okay for everybody else. Um, talk about any of your like maybe new tax issues for, for next year that people may need to look out for so that they can be prepared for it. Well, for 2023, there's a lot of little things that have changed. It's not a dramatic tax overhaul year, but there's one thing in particular that concerns me, and that's the change in the reporting of the Form 1099-K. Okay. And the 1099-K is that form that the IRS gets from credit card companies, PayPal, Squares, and places like that um, to tell them how much money a business or person or individual received in the course of the year using third-party payers. Got it. That threshold will used to be $20,000 or 200 transactions. And for reasons I still can't figure out, they dropped that threshold to 600 bucks. Okay. Which means that a lot of people are now going to get a form they've never seen before and may not know what to do with it. And sometimes the form's going to be inaccurate because that form covers payments from people that aren't business related. So if I gave you a payment through Cash App, loaned you money, reimbursed right, you right. for an expense, right. and it exceeds $600, well, you're going to get a 1099K because I gave you $600. But it had nothing to do with business. So if, if I don't properly identify that payment as non-business, it. it's going to show up wrong. It's, and, and so many people use that now. Oh like my ben, God. Right, yes. Everybody's using Especially it. Especially young people. Especially young people. It's so much easier. Right. So I'm, my fear is that next filing season, we're going to have people get forms they don't know what to do with it. Some of it could be legitimate business activities, but small, right? They might have had a flea market thing or something right. like that, a couple of thousand dollars, and now they have to deal with that on their tax return. Or at some point, the government will say, hey, you received this money. We don't see it in your tax return. What happened? Right. So it's going to cause a lot of problems. Last year, it was supposed to happen in 22, and there was a lot of pushback from businesses and people and the companies that have to issue the form because they weren't ready because right. that happened last minute. I'm hoping it happens again. The threshold's way too low. It's kind of a ridiculous law. 10000 might have been a good transition mm -hmm. down. So I know they're trying to make sure everybody files the correct amount of income on the tax return, but $600 is just ridiculous. Right. And it's going to, I think, net a lot of people. Yeah, that because every year, more and more people are, are using this kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, more and more people. And then they're going to come see you. <laughs> You're going to have to figure it all out. That's right. Thanks for coming in today. Great to have you here. Uh, now, to learn more about Otrando, Picaro, and Associates, you can head to roadshow.com.